A very good morning dear students. This is Dr. P. Srinivas, Professor and Head, Department of Prosodontics. Before I mention the topic of discussion today, let me give a little introduction about elder age group people. The people who are aged 60 years or above are considered as elder age group and they already reach 600 million in by 2000 year and expected to be reached 2.1 billion by 2050th year. However, whether the elder people live their extended life in good health or not is a big questionable aspect here. Because of aging process and the diminished health, they may lead to debilitating diseases that may alter their health and living style. Debilitating diseases may come in many forms or many shapes that may involve neural or skeletal or neuromuscular components and diminish their physical activities. As per survey by India today, there were around 15 leading debilitating diseases that compromises the living style of elders. To name few, uh, bone related uh, diseases include rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis or osteoarthritis or uh, neurological disorders like uh, Parkinson disease, dementia, cerebral palsy and others. Traumatic situations are also included in this that includes the spinal or uh, hip injuries. And these systemic conditions deteriorates their uh, lifestyle as well as the oral health also. That's why a separate segment of dentistry has been developed that is called geriatric dentistry which only concerns about the elder people's oral health care. And other segment includes zeros with the replacement of missing teeth. So whatever is the scenario, a special attention need to be given to this particular group when they report to us for the replacement of missing tooth. For that reason, the present topic is considered that is edentulous anatomical landmarks of maxilla and mandible. The contents of uh, following topic can be discussed under extraoral and intraoral anatomical landmarks. The structural anatomy and the positional variations of uh, extraoral landmarks like uh, ear, nose, eyes or lips clearly guides the prosthodontist to establish very imp few important aspects that includes the jaw relation, aesthetics, as well as the selection of teeth set. Then followed by intraoral landmarks will be discussed under two separate segments that is maxillary and mandibular edentulous arches. I think uh, this topic doesn't require any introduction because this topic being discussed from uh, preclinicals. So, the discussion about the anatomical landmarks will appear at the time of case history and whenever we discuss about the principles and objectives or the theories of impression making, all these aspects will appear. So consider this topic is uh, the basic uh, structure to develop the concepts of impression making. That's why a good knowledge of anatomy and physiology is a keystone in getting the best result during the fabrication of any processes which restores the missing oral parts and preserves what is remaining. This particular diagram clearly demonstrates the relation between the extraoral and the intraoral structures. The variation of uh, or edentulism of uh, uh, maxillar mandibular arch either partially or complete edentulism will show direct impact on the facial appearance, the loss of vertical dimension, exaggeration of the wrinkles, especially the lower third of the face. If we categorize the face into three parts, uh, either from a frontal view or lateral view, the upper part and middle part doesn't show much difference with the aging. Probably a little of uh, wrinkles will form around the eyes or around the nose, but with the loss of the teeth, 
the lower third of the face looks like shrunken. So this gives a, a clear cut intimation that with the edentulism, the facial appearance is drastically compromised. The beautification of the face, especially from frontal view, depends on so many factors. That includes the bilateral position of the eyes, nose and lips. Few components of the eye helps the prosthodontist either directly or indirectly uh, while doing the full mouth rehabilitation or the rehabilitation of the edentulous arches. That includes the lateral canthus. It is also called as outer canthus. The lateral canthus, the line drawn from the lateral canthus to the tragus of the ear uh, helps to determine the location of the condyle which is 13 millimeters uh, frontal to the external acoustic meatus. So this particular lateral canthus uh, landmark helps to establish the condylar location. And also pupil, the interpupillar line are helpful to establish the anterior occlusal plane. The other important structure is ear. Though it is positioned in the lateral aspect of the face, a few components of this ear guides the prosthodontist to establish certain uh, planes or the positioning of the face bow at the time of uh, jaw relation procedure. External acoustic meatus is a, a part which receives the face bow, the earpiece face bow and also the middle portion of the tragus, the line drawn from the tragus to the outer canthus of the eye gives the location of the condyle anterior to the external acoustic meatus which is around 13 millimeters anterior. And the other component is nose which is located at the central portion of the face and easily noticeable if at all any deformation happens. So here the lateral aspect of the nose that is called ala of the nose guides to establish the occlusal plane when uh, we draw the line from ala of the nose to the tragus of the knee that is called ala tragus line or the camphorus line which is helps to establish the posterior occlusal plane. The other important structure of uh, mid facial portion is uh, the combination of upper and lower lips. The line drawn from the base of the columella to the base of the mandible are considered as the lower third of the face, which is badly affected with the partial or complete edentulism by the exaggeration of the philtrum folding in the mid facial section as well as the corner of the mouth that is also called as oral commissures. The vermidum border and this cupid bow appearance, everything will be collapsed with edentulism. So, the one should make a note of this particular aspect when we perform the jaw relation procedures and these structures need to be re-established thoroughly without exaggeration of the structures. As I discussed earlier, these uh, muscular foldings that includes the nasolabial fold mentolabial fold, buccolabial fold and the filter ridges need to be uh, restored when we try to establish the aesthetic aspect in the complete danger rehabilitation. This particular slide demonstrates the different angles and lines formed between the extra oral landmarks. The first picture here demonstrates the nasolabial angle which is uh, formed by the proper angulation of the or position of the upper anterior teeth. The middle diagram uh, demonstrates the parallelism between the interpupillar line and the anterior occlusal plane from the frontal view. So here the position of the pupils of both the eyes are uh, important. Whereas the third diagram demonstrates the two important aspects that is the parallelism between the ala tragus line and the posterior occlusal plane which is demarcated with the red color lines. And the second point is the position of the condylar head in relation with the external acoustic meatus between the uh, tragus of the ear to the outer canthus line. So in this way extraoral 
landmarks helps the prosodontist to orient certain aspects to to rehabilitation of the intraoral processes and these are the few clinical pictures demonstrates uh, facebook position and uh, uh, find out the location of the condyle or head with the help of these uh, angles and lines formed by the extraoral landmarks then moral mucosa has been categorized as a masticatory lining and specialist mucosa masticatory mucosa appears at the hot palate area attached and free gingival locations where the food will have a direct contact with the mucosa and they are keratinized whereas the lining mucosa appears only in the limiting structures location locations like a soft palate cheek slip uh, vestibule floor of the mouth and they don't uh, they, they show no keratinization at all followed by specialized mucosa which is appear at the dorsum of the tongue let us start with the maxillary edentulous arch landmarks they have categorized as uh, limiting structures supporting structures and relieving structures limiting structures include labial frenum labial vestibule buccal frenum buccal vestibule hamlar notch and posterior petrosil supporting structures include hard palate residual ridge parietal rugae area and maxillary tuberosity relieving structures are incisive papilla mid palate and raphe and parietine torus let us start with the limiting structures of the maxilla the first one is labial frenum generally in dentulous condition this labial frenum is located between the maxillary two central incisors so once uh, uh, extraction happens due to periodontal problem or the trauma this particular landmarks guides us for the placement of two central incisors and it, and uh, this labial frenum doesn't have any muscle attachments that's why they perform only the vertical movement no lateral movements are uh, seen in this labial frenum whereas the buccal frenum will show the lateral movements but not with the labial frenum so in the complete denture construction the relief must be given at this particular area to accommodate this labial frenum for the uh, for the free movement sometimes high frenal attachment also noticed in the uh, edentulous cases that requires the surgical intervention called a phrenectomy procedure as i told you before this structure can be used as a, a midline point for the maxillary arch but some few, few clinical cases it may differ the next uh, limiting structure is labial vestibule which starts from one buccal frenum to the other buccal frenum and this space is influenced by orbicularis oris muscle that's why whenever we perform the bottom molding and mass compression procedure we activate this particular muscle by manipulating the upper lip so proper extension in uh, depth wise as well as uh, width wise is important to establish the aesthetics followed by the another limiting structure that is buccal frenum the other limiting structure uh, at uh, distro buccal area of the maxilla is the buccal vestibule this location is influenced by the coronoid process of the mandible that's why we ask the subject to move the mandible in lateral aspect as well as the open the mouth wide to record this particular area any over extension in this particular area leads to the dislodgement of the maxillary denture sometimes a patient may feel the discomfort uh, while opening the mouth with the dentures followed by the hamlar notch which is uh, considered with the most uh, distal most uh, uh, limiting structures of the maxillary denture so it is situated between the tuberosity and hamlar of medial derriere plate and this particular uh, notch is considered to be the distal termination of the maxillary denture any more extension beyond this point will lead to the impingement of the soft tissue or the terrigoid plates sometimes the denture may get dislodged due to the interference of the soft palate movements and this is dislocation 
uh, give a reference for the close approximation of the anterior and posterior vibrating lines. The posterior most limiting structures of uh, maxillary edentulous arch is a uh, posterior pelvic seal, which can be defined as the soft tissue area at or beyond the junction of hard and soft palates on which pressure can be applied within the physiological limits by a denture to aid in its retention. There are many ways of recording posterior pelvic seal. Clinically, this can be done either by Valsava maneuver or with the help of fluid wax technique. Whereas uh, in laboratory technique, we can uh, proceed the posterior pelvic seal, we can prepare the posterior pelvic seal with orbital scraping. Now there are many advantages of uh, properly established posterior pelvic seal. That includes complete peripheral seal can be achieved. Second one is prevention of food or air accumulation from the posterior aspect of the maxillary denture. It reduces the gagging sensation and uh, because uh, uh, the soft tissue, uh, soft palate interference are, are completely avoided with the proper establishment of posterior pelvic seal. And also it helps in compensation of the polymerization shrinkage. The supporting structures of the maxillary arch includes uh, primary supporting structures and secondary supporting structures. The primary uh, supporting or foundation structures include horizontal plates of uh, palatine process of the maxilla. We need to remember one aspect here, the whichever uh, location of the jaw is perpendicular to the masticatory forces are considered to be the primary stretch bearing areas or supporting structures. So for that reason, the center portion of the heart palate that is horizontal plates of uh, palatine process of the maxilla are considered as the primary supporting structures followed by residual alveolar ridge. Secondary supporting structures includes the slopes of uh, the maxillary anterior and posterior palatal area. The last slide of uh, discussion is the reliefing structures of maxillary arch that includes incisive papilla, mid palatine suture or mid palatine duffy and maxillary tori. If maxillary tori is present, that need to be assessed properly and uh, surgical correction is always indicated. If surgery is not indicated or not patient is not suitable for the surgical uh, intervention, then sufficient relief should be given in the denture base. <clears throat> then followed by mid palatine suture, which is covered uh, with a frazel mucosa. That's why before we uh, make the mass impressions, sufficient relief should be provided with the escape holes. Then most important aspect in the anterior segment of uh, maxillary arch, the relieving structure is incisive papilla. Since the contents of the incisive foramina passes through this incisive uh, canal, uh, incisive papilla must be relieved before uh, we make the mass impressions with uh, preparation of escape holes. Otherwise, patient uh, may complain about the paresthesia or burning sensation of the premaxillary area. And this incisive papilla also helps for the placement of the maxillary to central incisor since it is uh, located exactly parallel to the central incisors. And sometimes uh, this helps us to assess the bone resorption and as well as the jaw relation procedures. But in some literature, few have mentioned canine eminence and the fovea palatine is also considered as a relieving structure. If canine eminence, the bony prominence is existing, then it is considered as a relieving structure, otherwise it is not considered. And fovea palatine is not a relieving structure since it is it gives a, a rough idea about the location of the posterior palatal seal. This fovea palatine may coinc uh, coincide with the uh, posterior palatal seal either anteriorly or the posteriorly. So not much consideration is given to the fovea palatine. So with this we have finished uh, limiting supporting structures as well as the peripheral structures of the maxillary edentulous arch. The next session will be on the uh, mandibular edentulous area landmarks. Thank you very much. Thank you for attention.